there's a new organization, OpenAI. Uh, and the idea is Elon Musk uh, uh, funded this along with Reed Hoffman of LinkedIn, Peter Thiel, the financier, the guy who put the uh, initial investment into Facebook. I don't know who Jessica Livingston is. I don't know. I just saw that and was surprised. Amazon Web Services. Collectively, they've pledged more than a billion dollars over a period of time. The co-chairs will be Musk and the CEO of Y Combinator, Sam Altman. And the idea is to open source AI, artificial intelligence research, so that Google, Microsoft, Apple, Uber don't kind of own this as a proprietary thing. She's a founding partner of Y Combinator. Okay, there you go. Um, y Combinator is a very famous uh, startup school and, uh, and uh, angel investment uh, company. She looks a little like Morris Meyer. She does, doesn't she? Meyer, Mayer, I never know. Everybody says it differently. We'll I work at Yahoo. We'll Mayor? get there. You work at Yahoo, I'm going to find out. We're going to get the inside I, scoop. Oh, I, yeah. I want to know the details, gotta, the deets. we got to get there. So um, what do you think? Is this a good idea? I mean, I like the idea that no one company should own this. They say any patents we come up with will be royalty-free. All our results will be public. So on that on that side, I think it's good. The other side, though, I'm a little worried about too much money being pumped into AI research. No, but this is, is about this standardizing Skynet? it. No, but if it's, it's going to happen, gonna don't Skynet. Why not? Because it's not it's not going to be a single uh, a single incident ah. of AI. What's what they're doing is they're by making it open and everything open source. It's going to allow anybody to be able to hack on it. Anybody to uh, to implement new ideas, to be creative, to actually make a new product off of the backbone of what they've created. So instead of having one Skynet that controls everything, we're going to have little tiny AIs popping up all over the place. So Stephen and Levy, who wrote this article we're referring to on Medium, he's, he's, that's his now his uh, beat, his uh, hmm. publication. Stephen Levy asks Elon, if I'm Dr. Evil <laughs> and I use it, won't you be overpowering me? Musk says, well, that's an excellent question. It's something we've debated quite a bit. So they, too, are worried about this. Altman says, there are a few different thoughts about this. Just like humans protect against Dr. Evil by the fact that most humans are good, uh-oh. If Wrong they're assumption. relying on the most humans are good thesis, I don't know. And the collective force of humanity can contain the bad elements. We can't even contain Donald Trump. <laughs> we think it's far more likely that many, many AIs will work to stop the occasional... Oh, this is, your, this is what you're saying, Kiki. It's going to be will it's going to be work to stop the occasional bad actors and the idea that there is a single AI a billion times more powerful than anything else is not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Well, and the other part of this I think is really interesting is that as AI starts to take off, we're seeing people go right to open source. Unlike operating systems great. where it came along later. So you have Google open sourcing their TensorFlow uh, deep learning software. Right. You mm -hmm. have Facebook open Facebook. sourcing the design of their deep learning machines, which you could then run the TensorFlow stuff on and then take this and run on. So it, everybody is kind of pitching in and saying, let's let's do this as openly as possible because we all benefit from it. Although neither uh, of these uh, Google or Facebook projects will be used by OpenAI. They're going to go their own route and start from the ground up. Well, right, that's which my is question. Great. Is, yeah. is, Tom, is that, do you think altruism or intelligence around uh, deployment from the start sort of, uh, a design ethos in the beginning, or is that because the business model is just not clear, therefore the competitive spirit is not as high to protect IP? Yeah, I, it's probably a little of both, right? I mean, I know Google and Facebook both made a calculated decision to say, we'll probably make money more money if we open source this because it'll f progress faster. But that's part of what drives mm -hmm. open source development. I don't think TensorFlow is Google's state of the art, is what I think. I think they gave away their old stuff. And uh, open source that. And, and, of course, remember, one of the things that you get when you open source something is contributors from outside Google putting contributions back into it. Yeah, that's the whole I, model. I fully believe that Google has their own proprietary stuff that they're not releasing. And that's pretty much how Google does Very it, likely. isn't it? Very likely, yeah. yeah. Um, Elon Musk was one of the people who said, we've got to pay attention to AI. This is potentially very risky. Um, we've all seen maybe too many movies like The Matrix and Terminator and maybe are over or going back to R.U.R., the very first movie about robots in the 20s, which was about robots taking over the world. Shopic, right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, this is not new. We've always been worried about that. Yeah. Um, and yet I do feel like this is potentially a risk. What is, I once asked uh, um, 
Ray Kurzweil, who's now at Google, great artificial intelligence researcher, why should we trust these AIs? And he said, because they'll think of us as their parents, their progenitors, and so they will respect and protect us. But again, I don't, fi I don't find that compelling. I, I was talking to Paul Sappho this week. All. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, pa Paul Sappho had a different philosophy about this. We were talking about it this week. We the were Institute talking about, for the Future. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about the future of tech for this. I was doing a piece for GMA about that. And uh, he said, actually, he thinks they'll, AI will fundamentally, AI devices will think of us as their pets. Most likely, yeah. <laughs> that seems I mean, more reasonable. I think that's a little better. But you kill your pet if you get hungry, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very or likely. Vice versa. Or, <laughs> yeah. You, what? The, I know our cats are thinking, any day now. <laughs> it's just we'll a matter of time. We'll, they'll wipe out on their segues and they'll be low to the ground. I mean, that's eyes. always the... You that's get the eyes, the, I'll eat the tongue. <laughs> the pattern no. is always, you know... We don't know what this technology will be used for. We don't know how powerful it might end up being. It's got the potential to do damage. We should be careful with it. Yeah, and and I think that's I think that's good and sensible. But I mean, we've we've developed things that can destroy our entire planet. And and I'm not saying that that makes it okay to do anything. But uh, it's we we are learn, maybe this is how we learn as a species not to destroy ourselves is to keep trying on these sorts of things. Yeah, and there and over and over again, we we've seen that we've done okay with with technologies yeah. that we have actually that it that the internet has allowed people to connect all over the world, right. do business, to to share ideas, to it it has improved society greatly. I mean, I can't I don't know if you can put a number on That's it. That's fair. But, um, we're we're it's we're doing good things. How about nuclear bombs? I was just gonna say, Leo, and where's this groany skepticism coming from? Uh, is this climate change? Here's my real. Here's my actual genuine question, which is: Is it just a science fiction version uh, of AI that that scares us, or is it legitimate to think that a it's even possible to create a computer program that uh, thinks like a human or has its own? I, let's uh, let's say sentience and its own will, because that's what would be scary. Is that even possible? Or, I mean, I don't want to buy into some science fiction that isn't even possible and worry the about fact that. that it, of course I mean, it people will like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk are saying it might be possible. Uh, and even Ray Kurzweil is saying it might be possible. So the fact that it might be possible makes me say, yes, we should, we should be careful, but not that we shouldn't investigate it. Well, here's the question. So we were talking about service robots earlier this week and that the success of service robots is going to be, is going to come Have you from watched Humans? No. Oh, what a great show. I'm a new mother. I haven't seen a movie in 10 <laughs> it's a, years. It's a, this you can watch. It's a TV show. You've seen this, Tom. <laughs> Wonderful TV show uh, about a service robots. Right. And they're humanoid. Uh, and they it's have- a TV show? It's massively good. It's on oh, so BBC. I didn't even know it was a TV show. I yeah. thought it was a movie. Humans. Like, that's how- whoosh. So, okay, it's humans. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, now I'm with you. And, I'll uh, pretend like I'm going to watch it, it But now. it's interesting because, uh, well, there's, there's a lot of implications that are raised by these- well, so well, the point was is that they're only going to succeed when we stop anthropomorphizing them, <laughs> and that if we stop, well, that's the mistake humans made. <laughs> they well, look just like humans, right? And therefore, our expectation is so high that they will. It's AMC, not BBC. That they'll meet sort of human standards, and maybe that's what's so wrong about this discussion about AI is not that they become human-like, but that they employ pieces of intelligence that meet our needs, and if mm -hmm. we see them starting to exceed that in some way, that's scary. That it'll still be st still be so nascent that we can stop it mm -mm. and change it. You don't think so? Mm -mm. You think it'll just snowball? He isn't. No. So one of the things Ray, Ray Kurzweil talks about is the singularity. That m moment, that point in time, when uh, human uh, intelligence is in or machine intelligence is indistinguishable from human intelligence. He makes it clear that he's not saying it will be the same as, but that we won't be able to tell the difference. It'll be indistinguishable. If that happens, what's the next logical step for this artificial intelligence is to start to take over design and construction of artificial intelligences because they'll yep. do as good a job and then rapidly a much better job and then geometrically an infinitely better job than we do. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it doesn't matter what we say, I think. We become those, but here, those kind of chubby people in Wally. -E. Yeah, but here <laughs> once again, we're like, we're, we're jumping to that end that, yeah. that scary end point when actually artificial intelligence, there are many, many different kinds. And it, like you said, Becky, different kinds of intelligence, you know, that you, we program in what we want 
a particular AI to have for our needs. Does a service, ro a service robot need to have artificial intelligence that contains emotions? Do we program in some kind of emotional, social connectivity to that robot? Or is it just for working? Is it just AI to be able to notice when drugs need to be given, when care needs to be given of some form? Um, and so that's the question. What are we designing for? What are we creating? Do we, I mean, do we need to create this human-like intelligence? I mean, this is just people playing God, you know? But they, but uh, that's never stopped us before, right? No, of course it's and not. It's fact, not it's going not, to stop us. It's pretty but... cool, right? It, wouldn't it be cool? Yeah. Don't you want HAL 9000? Don't you? <laughs> 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 right well, I, to the I, point I, where I think... he locks you out of the pod bay door. <laughs> I think Kiki's making a good point, which is there's, there's a couple of different questions. There's loads of different questions, but there's should we investigate this at all is like biomedical research. We play around with viruses and, and dangerous infectious agents uh, because we think we can make something good for humanity out of it, even though it's dangerous to research on those. And I think that question is, yes, we should investigate deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence for those reasons. Then there's also the jumping to the end of like, yeah, but what if we end up making something that is a different kind of intelligence and can get off on its own? Will it be more intelligent than us? And will we let it take over? That's, that's, that's a different set of philosophical questions there, too.